Okay, so Kyle, today let's yes, imagine man. I'm a, a sales leader of some kind, uh, and our team already has a process in place for how we get our new customers. Um, sounds like a big headache to switch over to AI. Convince me otherwise. What uh, what would be the benefits, and why would it be worth making that leap? It's a really good question and an understandable one. And first of all, congratulations that you're already having success. Most sales teams for the last 18 to 24 months it's, have gotten pretty beat up. It's been tough out there, especially if you're selling to other software companies. The What I find in speaking with CROs, CFOs, chief operating officers, is that the way they've designed their go-to-market, it may be working from a spreadsheet standpoint, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's efficient. And what I mean by that is many companies, and I'd be surprised if this wasn't the case for you, Nathan, many companies intentionally design inefficiency into their model because it's the only way that they could hit the, the results that they needed to hit. And the, the best example I have of this is that the sum of your sales quotas, I can pretty much guarantee is higher than your actual revenue targets. So if you're trying to bring in $10 million this quarter, I have a sneaking suspicion that the sum of your sales quotas is probably at least 12 to 14 million, like that 20 to 40% coverage over your goal, which means you're expecting reps to not be maximally productive. You've modeled that into your business. So what are the downstream implications of that? You're paying a lot of money. Like the, the salespeople are not cheap. They're probably, in fact, one of the most expensive investments you have across your entire business. So simultaneously, they're the most expensive and one of the least efficient parts of your business. It may, quote unquote, be working, but there's definitely areas for you to inspect, find the friction in the process, find the inefficiencies in the process, iron that out, and go and run a much tighter go to market that's going to be less expensive. So still hit your revenue numbers or even exceed your revenue numbers even more with your current capacity or find ways to take cost out of the system so that you can run a leader, more efficient go to market. Okay. And as you've been talking to sales leaders, I'll step out of my fake role as a sales leader. Uh, as you've been talking to real sales leader, what do you think is driving some of that skepticism? What are some of their fears? Do you think? Well, I think it's maybe less fear as as much as it is they just don't know what's possible. And part of that, part of the reason for that is because their experience with ChatGPT is really their experience with AI in general. And this happened, what, 12 or 18 months ago, where ChatGPT just became an overnight success and company leadership came to them and said, you know, the CEO calls an emergency all hands meetings and says, you need to start using AI. And the sales leader is like, I, okay. And so they log into ChatGPT, they see the blinking cursor that just is there, and they're like, I don't actually know how to get any value out of this. And so they basically log in once, click around a little bit, don't get any value, log out, never to return again, and then they're skeptical of AI. Meanwhile, you see on LinkedIn or, or wherever else on Twitter, on, I was going to say Facebook, MySpace, um, you see on LinkedIn and Twitter, all of these use cases for AI and the output that you see, the emails that are generated, the, the account plans that are generated, they all kind of suck. And so 12 months ago, sales leaders saw this and like, my team can write better emails than that. My team can create better account plans than that. There's a new paradigm now. AI from 12 months ago is not AI today. And when you have a, uh, a platform that's purpose-built for these use cases, purpose-built to write effective cold emails, purpose-built to build meaningful account plans, it makes a world of difference. And we at Copy AI, we've done the heavy lifting. You don't have to be a prompt engineer to go into ChatGPT and architect the perfect prompt to get what you want. We do that for you. So all you need to do is give us the input for the company that you want to research or the lead you want to be uh, creating outbound emails to. And we already have the series of prompts that will go and execute the jobs to be done. So that's the, that's the role of our software. And we can help you overcome the art of the possible so that you know now out of the box, oh, here are the 10 things I can do with AI right now. We help make sure that there's little to no learning curve. We make sure that the output of the AI workflows is actually good and, and like not just good, it's really freaking good. And we make sure that your reps don't need to be bouncing around a bunch of different apps, logging into ChatGPT every time they want to use it. We're going to meet them where they are in CRM, productivity tools, in sales loft or outreach, whatever it is. And so all those integrations with our purpose-built platform sort of overcomes the main objections that you may have. Okay. And and as we're talking about that heavy lifting, I, I 
obviously it's a huge draw to the fact that, you know, the sales team don't have to be tech pros to start using this stuff. Let's dive into some of the specific heavy lifting that Copy AI has done. And so if we were to just go over some of the five easiest workflows, walk yep. me through what it would look like to get a sales team using something for uh, prospecting or lead generation. What would that workflow and experience look like? Yeah, I'm actually going to go a little bit more foundational here, Nathan, because I think that uh, I'm such a nerd for account research and account planning. And I suspect that a lot of senior level salespeople agree with me. And I expect that a lot of individual contributing salespeople do not agree with me. <laughs> and what I mean by that is having like taking the time, spending the energy to build an effective account plan, it sets the stage for everything else that you do into that account, whether it's prospecting or running discovery, running demos, managing the deal, negotiation, whatever it is. But because sales teams are so bogged down having to execute an enormous quantity of robotic tasks, they don't have time to do account plans. And so there's this vicious cycle where they have to execute this high volume of activity. They don't have time to do account plans. So their outreach is crappy. And so they don't get responses from their accounts. So they don't build pipelines. So you're not gener generating revenue. And so I think the fastest way to get started with AI is automating account research. And now you could go into ChatGPT and you could write, give me an account plan for Snowflake. And it's going to be terrible because you're not actually, you're not a professional prompt engineer. What we have done at Copy AI and the way that Copy AI is doing the heavy lifting for you is we went out and we interviewed something like five or eight professional salespeople, you know, salespeople, revenue ops leaders, revenue strategy people that have been doing this, building account plans for decades and decades. I think the collective wisdom of the six or seven people we talked to is like 130 years of sales experience. And we asked them for a half an hour, talk us through your process. What do you do when you're trying to learn about a public company? What do you do when you're trying to research a private company? And they talked us through their processes. So then we had this unbelievable kind of library of knowledge from these sales experts that we could then then code into our product. So the workflow that we created that researches a public company is the collective wisdom from all of those people that told us their best practices. Same thing for researching private companies. And now we have two workflows that you can install right now, like literally free trial, go get them right now. And all you need is the public company's ticker symbol, the private company's URL, and you get beautiful account plans that highlight a few main areas. One, where are they making bets for growth? Two, what likely challenges are they facing? And three, how does your value prop help them solve those growth areas or overcome those challenges. And it's such a shortcut. It's not to say that's like all the thinking that you need to do as a seller, but it helps as this launch pad for meaningful outreach, meaningful conversations. And it saves a ton of time. I'm talking like if you're an account, if you're a rep and you get a new territory at the start of the fiscal year, if you're up market, you're probably getting like 50 to 100 accounts. If you're down market, you're getting some like 200 to 500 accounts. If you have to go build an account plan for every one of those, we're talking about multiple hours per account. So all of a sudden, you need to now go spend 200 hours building these account plans. That's five weeks of inactivity. And you can go and solve all of that in the snap of the fingers. And from a rev ops standpoint, from a sales leadership standpoint, you can pre-enrich these accounts in your CRM. So when you deliver your new accounts, your new territories, your new books, whatever to your reps, all the information they need is right there in the CRM. So they can just go sprint. And that's the way that you can overcome some of that inefficiency. That's the way that you can flip the script and make sure that right now reps are only spending 30% of their time selling with that's when nuts. you can automate a lot of the menial mundane uh, tasks, you can totally flip that on its head. And they, uh, companies using copy AI, they tell us that their sellers went from spending 30% of their time selling to spending 80 or 90% of their time selling two to three X more time on the phone with prospects, with customers, generating pipeline, closing business, getting renewals, finding expansions. Like that's what this is all about. Yeah, I wonder if that'll have an impact on revenue by any chance. I just wonder if that extra selling time will have any kind of impact. That's amazing. Okay, so I, account plan, and I, I do want to dig into this really quickly to use a phrase you've used before. I want to double double tap on something, double click on something, uh, where you talked about the sales leaders would agree with you, the individual sellers probably wouldn't on that account plan. Do you think they wouldn't? Or do you think they're just like, we don't have time for this? What are you talking about? Go make these account plans. They don't have time for it. They view it as something that is a nice to have and not a need to have. 
Okay. And it's unfortunate. And, and probably, Nathan, they haven't been trained to how to go do this well because they are, they're not incentivized to go build a robust account plan. What shows up on a dashboard? The number of calls they make, the number of emails they send, the number of ops they're running, that's what shows up on a dashboard. Yeah. There's no dashboard that says, here's how many account plans you created. And there's definitely not a dashboard that says, here's how high quality your accounts account yeah, plans work. So the incentives are misaligned. They're not incentivized to go spend the time to do this. They're incentivized to go blast a high quantity of activities because it shows up well on a dashboard. So frontline managers, individual reps, they need to change their thinking here. And you need to be more strategic. You need to be more thoughtful because what really matters is your ability to generate pipeline that has a real chance of closing. And the more insight and the sharper your POV is on those accounts, the be the, AKA the better your account research is, the better off you're going to be in pretty much every facet of sales. Okay. So we have account planning. You dive in. Copy AI has done that heavy lifting. Is that where it stops for sales team? Or can Copy Far AI, from. would it do more work? Okay. So what, what other are good, easy, out of the box, ready to use workflows that could help sales teams like today? Yeah. Um, so account research is the, I think the tip of the iceberg, that's the easiest thing. And it sets such a useful foundation for many other things that you can do. So now that you have this account research in your CRM or in your productivity tools or wherever it is, you can then leverage that to go and write effective emails, create a script for video messaging, create a script for a demo flow that you want to run. There's no shortage to how you can go and leverage that information for a million other things across the sales process. So I would say that probably the next lowest hanging fruit is prospecting. You can, with the right information about the leads that you're prospecting into, with the right information about the accounts that you're researching or that are in your book, you can go and have really, really solid prospecting flows created by AI. And that, again, saves a ton of time. The salesperson doesn't need to spend 30 minutes writing one email. They can ask AI to write a first draft and then spend two minutes editing that email and you're ready to rock and roll. And that's a huge time saver, huge time saver. Um, the same thing for generating call scripts, for uh, doing persona research, for doing competitive analysis. All of these things are super low hanging fruit and all out of the box with copy AI. It just requires point and click. Hey, I, the last thing I wanted you to walk me through, if possible, I wanted you, I just think it's the coolest thing, how we use our sales call transcripts internally here and what happens with the automations, what gets sent to Slack. I would I just think that's the neatest thing. Um, it's really brought marketing closer to sales because we can all get a view of what the real pain points are, what kind of content we should be making. It's, you know, normally sales and marketing hate each other because uh, sales is soulless. But uh, here it's really done the opposite. So if you would just walk us through what happened, we've done the prospect and we have the account plan prospecting, we jump on a call with a lead. What internally do we have set up happens with those calls? Yeah. So remember one of the main objections that people have to AI output, they say the quality of this output is bad and they're not wrong. Like if you go into chat GPT and you say, write me a blog post about AI for sales prospecting, you're going to get a bad blog post because there's no additional context that chat GPT has. It's going to search the web. It's going to kind of just regurgitate whatever it can find from web results. So what we're trying to do here with this workflow I'm about to explain is take like incorporate human intelligence and human voice, human conversation into the content that we create. So every sales call that we do, every webinar we have, every podcast we do creates a transcript from that transcript. That's a human to human conversation. Let's just use a sales call as an example. Our one of our sellers is demoing copy AI to a prospect and the AI is listening or reading that transcript and trying to find the quote unquote aha moments. So where in that sales call did the prospect go? Oh my gosh, or holy smokes. I can't believe that's possible. Wow. What, you know, whatever, whatever the trigger is that says, this is something that's a light bulb moment for the prospect. And then the AI takes that snippet of the conversation, learns about the use case that's being described and writes a blog post about that use case in the voice of the seller who's presenting it. So we, from a content team, we get these blog posts that are written in the voice of our account directors, in the voice of our sellers, not in the voice of existing material on the internet, the way they present it, the way they talk about the value props. And so we get this really rich library, I think something like 40 articles written per day <laughs> from this, yeah. this workflow. 
And then our content team, AKA you, Nathan, can go and search this huge database of pre-written content and say, we need to rank for XYZ keyword. Here are the 10 articles that were written about these keywords. Let's figure out the content schedule to go and, and uh, publish these posts. That drives more traffic to the website. That creates more sales calls. That creates more transcripts. And the flywheel continues to turn. And that's one of the ways that this brings sales and marketing super close together and codependent. Yeah, it's just been so amazing. And like you said, I, I, 40 a day is a modest number. We started this a couple <laughs> months ago. I think we're up to 4,000 in the content database. It's like it's... It's a lot and they're all very accurate. And like you said, because it's learning from that human to human conversation, the voice is very unique. The information is always incredibly accurate about our product and about what it's doing and, and how it's helping. It's It's been very impressive. Um, okay, so we have account planning, we have prospecting. Once those calls come in, you can align sales and marketing, you can get different insights, you can pull out pain points, bunches of stuff. Um, I lied when I said last thing earlier, because I'm, I'm nerding out here and I, I do want one more thing. Those sales call transcripts, I, I would love for you to explain a bit about how we do the lead scoring and the reason and why the reasoning behind AI mm -hmm. is so important when it tells us about that. It's not just guessing like a lot of yeah. tools do. Tell us what makes our internal lead scoring and segmentation thing, a workflow really cool. Yeah, so this is probably the second easiest use case for sales and operations teams to implement right now is lead scoring and enrichment. So I we already talked about account scoring and enrichment, and this is a related kind of a sister workflow there. So you have your accounts that you want to uh, be prospecting and selling into, and then you have the leads from those accounts that you care about. In kind of lead scoring of yesteryear, you would get some sort of black box score that says this lead is two chili peppers out of five and you have no idea why like somewhere some marketing ops person or operations person somewhere said here are the criteria that dictate a good lead they have some level of seniority or they come from some account or some industry or something like that and it's kind of useful but mostly not useful and i think something like 10 out of 10 salespeople will tell you they don't care at all about lead scoring because it's never been actually predictive of conversion to meetings. So what we have done is we have AI workflows that are powering our lead enrichment, where the whenever a lead is created, the AI will go and find that person's LinkedIn URL, scrape their URL to understand their work history, know what company they come from, do lightweight research about that company. And then we it'll give a tier, tier one, two, or three, how, how hot of a lead is this, based on the criteria that we set for tier one. So for us, tier one is a relatively senior person from a Fortune 1000 company who has decision-making authority, something like that. And then the AI can infer based on what they learn about the lead, what they learn about the account, does that person satisfy that tier one criteria? And if so, mark it as tier one and give the reason why. So the AI spits out a one or two paragraph explanation of why this is a tier one lead. And then the seller sees that and they can see that, oh, okay, this person this is the reason why this is a tier one lead. And this is what the AI, the rationale that the AI applied to this person. So there's trust, there's actual rationale, and that just makes the whole system flow a lot better. And I should say, these lead scores are predictive of conversion here internally. And they're super easy to maintain because they're human voice maintenance. It's not you having to go into the back end of your marketing automation system and toy with the points that are allocated. If somebody goes to your pricing page and all that other stuff, it's something that is way easier to control and then actually monitor and analyze. And I don't know if you've gotten to talk with Rob about it. Rob Mosley, uh, the fourth, I believe is the full title, our, our head of GTM. Uh, um, tons of experience, just tons of experience comes to the table. And he was saying he'll read the reasoning from AI sometimes, and it will change his mind quite often. He'll say, I was kind of discounting that lead, but then AI came back and told me why. And yeah, that's a I good, and like you said, it's predictive. Okay, so we have account planning, account research. Uh, we've got process. We have basically everything. One more, right? Yes. Please hit us with one last. We're going to round. What, but this wait, up. there's more. There's more. Yes, the, the bonus. Next easy. <laughs> the next easiest workflow I found to implement is competitive analysis, and this is yet another um, kind of two different pathways here to to fulfill this workflow. One pathway is the AI can listen to transcripts and find uh, competitive mentions and then go build competitive analysis plans based on whatever competitors are mentioned in calls and feed that back to the rep. 
the other way is more manual where the rep says, yeah, you know, I'm selling against gong and I need to understand what are gong strengths and weaknesses. And then I can go and again, just input their URL and what our workflow will do in either case, whether it's learning from a sales transcript or it's triggered manually by a user is it will go and read their G2 reviews, go and read their website, go and read basically the publicly available information on the internet, and then summarize what are the pros about this company? What do people like? What are the cons about this company? What do people hate? And then how should we position our product in light of what their strengths and weaknesses are? And it's that kind of like super easy, fast, competitive information that salespeople very rarely have. I mean, you probably have a competitive channel at your company that is always lighting up with all these new competitors. And you're like, who the hell is that? I've never heard of them before. Well, your prospect has, and you need to be able to respond to them in some intelligent way. And your rep just spending five seconds on the competitor's website and trying to bluff their way through that competitive conversation is not good. So that this competitive research workflow we have streamlines all of this, makes it super easy to build and maintain competitive battle cards, create trap setting questions, do all the things that you need to do to stay well informed about what your competitors are doing and how your competitors are changing. So that's a key thing is that this workflow can be rerun every week, every month, or it can be triggered based on when your company, when your competitive company updates their website and a new competitive report can come out that says, here's their new product, here's their new positioning, here's the new way to take this down. And that's, it's a super powerful, always on sort of thing. How many sales reps in SDR or SDRs, BDRs, anyway, do you know that actually take the time to do thorough competitive research? the top 1%. Is it just because of time? I'm so floored by it. But as we're talking, I'm like, there's a lot of time in account research, creating the sales battle cards, and you're doing that uh, account after account, then you got to prospect, find the right people, reach out to the right people, follow up with the right people, and then doing competitive research at the same time. Is it just time? Or is it a big headache too? It's time and it's know how. So, okay. you know, the time component is if I have to go onto G2 and read a hundred G2 reviews, like ain't nobody got time for that. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going <laughs> to do happening. it. And, and so the, the time is a big component of it. And then the know-how and how to summarize what you're learning and how to think as if you're a competitive intelligence person, like that's hard. And so having AI take care of both things, the time savings and the know-how is a double whammy that just supercharges your sales team. Oh man. Okay. This has been great. We have covered so much. Um, before we leave, can I put you on the spot? We can edit this out too, if you're not comfortable with it. Can I put you on the spot <laughs> with something now? Okay. Fire away. You, you are known, and I did not know this before you came. Uh, you are known as like the sales king. I don't want to say God, cause I don't want to offend any religious people, but you're known as like the sales king on LinkedIn and like the experience. I think it's fascinating that you came to copy AI by choice. You weren't homeless and looking for a job or anything that you literally saw what it could do. And as a sales expert said, nah, I got to be a part of that. I just wanted you to flesh out a little more fully. Why? Cause I don't think people know that story very well. And if you could just take two minutes to say, what was your aha moment that our transcript would have caught and delineated? Yeah. Um, the whole entire time I saw the platform, the first time it was just one extended aha moment. This is like absolutely mind blowing the entire time. I wasn't looking for a new job. I was very happy at my previous gig, but I saw the technology. I saw what it was capable of. And my initial thoughts were, this is the future and I want to be part of the future. And I want to help pull people toward this future because the go to market, the state of the go to market is so broken right now. And so much of it is fixable with this platform. We can make the lives for individual sellers, for managers, for VPs, CROs, RevOps people, CFOs, CMOs, the, everywhere across the go-to-market team. We can make their lives easier, better, more productive. We can help the B2B ecosystem be better. It's so noisy right now. There's so much garbage and we can help fix it. And that, that to me is a huge draw and I'm, I'm really excited to try and make it happen. Well, we're obviously really happy to have you, but I just wanted everyone to know that like you're you're not coming at this uh, because you're paid by copy AI. You wanted <laughs> to come at this because of the technology, if that makes sense. It's just so it's, it's a little funny. bit of both. <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> yeah. Well, sure, yeah, yeah. There you go. All right, that seems like a good place to stop it. So, thank you so much, Kyle. This is great. We were talking today. We covered account planning and research. Um, we touched on prospecting a little bit, but we uh, really looked at 
competitive research and then transcripts pulling uh, the teams together. And this was just great. So my really pleasure. Appreciate my it. Thanks for the time. Cool. All right.